All right, so I think we have fairly enough people right now, so let's start. Um, so my name is Dwayne Newville. So I started out working in uh, BioConnect, um, and then after relocating to the UK under the Suprema umbrella. So basically Suprema is the manufacturer of the biometric devices that you now see and use in your day-to-day -day or business that you've dealt with in the past. Um, and then I've been working in the technical department for I think under the last four years where we have basically made a lot of new opportunities um, and also been involved to a lot of football clubs. And ideally they've been using Paxton on most of the football clubs in the, in the UK currently. Um, so recently we just won an award for the Hermes Creative Award. We did the, the case study for um, Leicester City using our readers and Paxton um, in the collective um, joint uh, solution for the client. Um, so that's a little bit about me and what I basically do. Um, but, all right, so in today's session, we've broken it down into four parts. So what is the Suprema integration with Paxinet 2? Where we discuss the instruction features, uh, the diagram of how to connect um, the system, of course, the license process, and to the installation. So what is supported, what OS you need, also, what biometric device from the Supreme Umbrella that's supported with this integration. And of course, a little bit about Paxton Net 2. Keep in mind, I'm not the expert here, but we are, do have a few on, uh, on the call. So if they could correct me in anything or add anything, they could definitely do so. And of course, how to install the Supreme integration with Paxton. Getting started, um, how to activate the Net 2 software, how to configure the utility um, from Net 2. Of course, how dashboard of our uh, integration looks like and what, it, what each step means. And of course, how to add a device to the integration, how to add a user from the Paxton screen itself. So it's basically one window, which is almost like it's a seamless integration, which most clients would definitely love and, and like. Uh, they don't have to go and open additional windows, they can stay all in one, one screen. And of course, how to enroll a finger and face. And of course, at the end, while well, we're switching my laptop, um, the practical tests and also if any questions you want to bring up or anything you want to demonstrate again um, from my my presentation i could definitely do so all right so first things first what is suprema integration with paxton net 2. so if you do want this integration it is listed on our website under third-party integration um, there will be a download link and of course the installation guide Keep in mind the current download link will be updated. So definitely either wait till you know the first week of August um, to get it, or if you want to play with it now, definitely go ahead and download it now. And then we'll have a new upgrade that will have new features and new capability. Keep in mind. So Suprema recently announced that we have integrated our devices with Paxton Access Control System. It's called Suprema Integration with Paxton Net 2. The integration will enable businesses to use Suprema devices in combination with Net2. So pretty much any device that you pretty much see us um, ad, uh, advertise, you could definitely use our device and add directly into this integration. And the only connection from our device to Paxton is three wires. So Paxton is still controlled whether you get in or out of the door. And if you have permission to even enter that door, and then our devices just are there to either validate who you are via user card, via user face or fingerprint, or just an ID and PIN, totally up to the organization. Some key features to, to look out for and what you can do with our integration. Um, one, you could definitely uh, enroll users directly from the Paxton screen. Um, in the installation guide, you, it will be called Enrollment Helper. It's automatically checked by default. So if you do want to use or intend to use it, definitely make sure it's checked when you installation. You can enroll users directly on the Paxton system without having to open additional windows. So this is another key feature. Uh, you can search and add and remove devices. Um, in, in most integration, you can't do this directly from the screen or have this functionality. The user data syncs in real time between that two and our system. Uh, you don't have to manually enter a token anymore. As soon as you go add a user from the Paxton window, there will be an automatic increment of a number that continues to go up as you keep adding users. Um, you can upload users from our device as well. 
Um, so that is the functionality where if you enroll users directly from the device, you could upload into the system. Out into the system. Um, you could also manage connected device, registered user, fingerprint face, and card and PIN from the integration. It's also a neat integration as well. Uh, you can configure device and resend configuration to other devices. So it makes it a lot easier for installers when you're doing, doing with multiple devices. You can just configure one and then share amongst the rest. You can also connect and manage up to a thousand biometric devices. So similar to our system, Biostar, you could literally do the exact same here where you could add a thousand devices. And obviously the doors and configuration is all done in the packs inside, but you can definitely add and configure devices um, on our end. Continue on with the features. So if you look carefully here, you can see how the packs and screen on the back and what most are used to the, the add user screen that pops up on the left hand side there. And then you have on the right how our integration is called and what, what you basically would be presented with. So here you pretty much see that you have a finger print where you can select the templates, the readers, and the login screen. So as you install the software, you definitely need to use the same login that you've created in the login screen to actually enter and log into our um, integration without leaving the Paxson window. Of course, the settings there for you to take with server. So then this screen here, you can pretty much enable biometric. So you can use your face or card or even RFID cards uh, that's supported by the Paxson. Very easy to use in management. So as soon as you enroll in your user in Paxton, it automatically syncs over to the integration. Um, easy enrollment process where you could pretty much enroll from a USB um, BioMini or you could enroll from an actual biometric devices. Totally up to you. Um, this is could be used for a small business enterprise level because you could go to an amount of a uh, thousand devices. Right, so some people may be wondering, what do you need for this integration to work? If you're used to using Paxton with our system, you can definitely continue the exact same way. Um, the only thing that's different is A, you can now use a BioMini Plus 2 directly in our integration or with the Paxton. Uh, you could then definitely have a, our integration software, which is called Supreme Integration with Paxton Net 2. You definitely need a Paxton ACU controller. And of course, the Paxton software registered on the Pro Professional. So you get added features on the Paxton side. And for the diagram, if you're looking at the screen right now, you have the Net2 software, which is obviously connected via TCP IP to your network, which is also connected to your Net2 controller. And of course, you install our software as well, which is Prima integration software, which is then also connected uh, or installed on a, a client PC, where you could definitely connect to the same network along with our readers. Um, for the Paxton version, um, I have tested, well, we, were, we started off with 6.01, and I have recently, um, after this discussion with Jeremy, the senior part manager, he, he gave me the link for the new version, which is 6.04. And which you'll see my demo, um, demonstration later on that we're using the latest version of Paxton and it does work in sync because the SDK hasn't changed. Um, we store the fingerprint um, binary, sorry, fingerprints are stored in SQL Lite and that's pretty much where the connection is um, between the two databases. And of course, when you log in and install the software, you definitely use the OEM client, which is one of the Net2 operator that doesn't come up for login purposes. So in a sense, if you were to um, have new users and new people into the department and they leave or the pass is only one user, at least the sync won't be broken when you use the OEM client. And of course, you have the relay that's connected directly from the Net2 controller directly to the door. So therefore, if the 
reader recognize who you are, Paxton confirm that you do exist and you do have permission, then the door will open. As a bonus, I've added the thermal camera in our discussion and also a video to show you as well. So as you know, the thermal camera is just a module kit that's pretty much added on the bottom of our face station um, reader. Um, so pretty much you have the module kit, the wall mount of the face station gets placed right in front there of the, the module kit. And then the USB will then go underneath from the USB port of the face station too. And then once you do that, you then have to upgrade the firmware of the face station to have the thermal camera settings, which you control from the actual device itself. And then if you get an alt success, then therefore you pretty much will send a signal via Wigan and move forward. So I'll play the video. Hopefully you guys can hear it. If you look at this video here, the one on the left, pretty much it's recognizing the person's face. It's also saying, yes, they're on the right threshold of the temperatures that's been set on the device. So once you get success on the temperature reading, and then the system also recognize who you are, this will actually send a Wigan signal to the Paxson panel. So whenever a device is a success, the signal of the Wigan gets sent to the Paxson panel. And on the one on the right, this person's over the vessel of the temperature, so therefore they get denied access, and also the Paxson panel won't re receive any weaving signal, therefore the door will not open. Um, so Angela does have an, a question, which I'll answer live. Um, does this require a plug-in, or the plug-in has any costs? Um, no, this integration is definitely done via DB, um, so there is no cost at all, and it comes when you're doing the installation, which you'll see further in my slide. Um, and there's no cost. The license for our system is free um, for our region in the UK. Um, of course, contact your sales um, manager in your region to get if there's any additional cost for licensing on our end. But of course, you have to pay for a license for the Paxson system as well to get the Pro. Or you can test it out with the Paxson Lite if you want to see how the sync works and how fast it works. Definitely go on our website now and download that link for our software. I'll continue. the license. So there's two types of license. So if you're used to using our Firestar 2 software, we've kind of adapted the same process. So if you do have internet access, you are installing um, our system on a server, um, you could definitely do online. Just request a license from your um, sales rep uh, or local distribution for the full standard license. Keep in mind when you do install the system, uh, you do have a 30-day trial period. 
And of course, when you're coming close to the end, the system will alert you. And of course, you have no internet access. You could definitely request an offline licensing where you then send us that offline file. We'll send you back a, um, a file which you, for you to apply and activate the software in offline mode. Um, keep in mind, we validate everything based on MAC address on the system. Um, and, but it is, <clears throat> it's a system-based license, so you can turn it pretty much end up buying to the amount of devices. It's based on your, your activated license. You can pretty much have full features and, and functionality with the system. Let's go into the installation process. So you don't need a BIOS or BIOS or two license. It's, it's a complete separate license. It's just the, the way that we use it via Connect is kind of similar. This is completely independent software, so you don't need any additional BIOS star or Suprema device, um, software. So OS compatibility. So as you know, Paxton, we recommend um, or they recommend the Intel Core i3, four gigs of RAM, a minimum of 20 gigs of disk space. Um, Windows 8 is what we recommend. So if you're gonna be installing both of these on the same system, I recommend starting at Windows 8 and up. Um, if you're gonna have Paxton on one, one um, system and then have our system on one, and therefore, as you can see, Paxton is supported and the range, so if you want six, version 6 plus, then you probably want to start Windows 7. Um, but keep in mind, if you're trying to install them both in the same system, then I'll start Windows 8, which both are supported. And then for our system, like I said before, it operates normally in the same environment as Paxton 2, but definitely, depending on when you're installing it, I would definitely check to make sure all the conditions are correct and right and ports are open. Um, but for our system, it's Windows 8 or later. And when you're installing our system, pretty much it comes with two different icons. Like I said, you could definitely go ahead and install the enrollment um, EXE, which is pretty much allows you to do the enrollment from the Paxson screen. But I would just advise you just to stick with the setup for Supreme integration with Paxson.exe file because it will actually prompt you to actually select the enrollment reader and install from there as well. Uh, when you do run the setup assistant as administrator, you're prompted with um, a quick drop down menu. So like I said before, you can do the full installation of the server and the client on the same machine along with Paxton, where you can select full installation. But if you're gonna have multiple system and multiple computers and clients and different operators, you could definitely install the server only on one machine and then have different client installation that will point back to the, the server. So you definitely have that option as well. Of course, when you're installing our integration with Paxton 2 um, software, it does prompt you to, to select and enter the OEM client. So once you've installed Paxton and you've went straight to setting up the OEM client password, this is where you pretty much have to enter information. So the OEM client account will be used for communication between this software and Paxton. So please refer to the manual to activate the OEM client um, from Paxton. And of course, right after it will prompt you to create a, a Suprema device admin. So this is where when you, if you have a device like the PlayStation 2, or the BioLite N2, which have menus. So if you hit the menu key, it's gonna ask you for um, a login. This is the login it's talking about. Um, unfortunately, we opt to use um, alphanumeric um, admin, so therefore, you, with our devices, we support you know, numeral numbers and also alphanumeric, so you can enter the actual letters device admin for your ID, and then right after that, you can enter your four-digit PIN. Um, yeah. And of course, when you move to the server, very key point to make, if you have a Wi-Fi connection and a LAN connection, please be mindful that you're, you're entering the right IP address. 
So for instance, my Wi-Fi is completely different than my LAN, which is 0 0.100. So in this server screen here, I'll enter 192.168.0.100, which is my LAN, and ignore my Wi-Fi connection or even disable it um, for the time being. All right, so now the supported devices. So as you know, we have a lot of biometric readers that do different things and have different functionalities. They read different cards. So I'll be very mindful of the reader you're getting. Keep in mind, each reader have a different model type and how we differentiate them. Is, so I'll take the BioLight, sorry, the BioEntry W2. You have BioEntry, you have BEW2-OAP. So the OAP, which is pretty much a good sign that it supports multiple and different card types, right? So if you go to the BEW2-OHP, then you know that it deals with HID prox card, and then the ODP, which pretty much is my fair card. So it looks the exact same, but there's different models. So you make sure you get the, the right model for the card on, on, on the site. And of course, the Wigan output, make sure you have the, read, the, the right Wigan format as well that's supported from the Paxi that's waiting for and also outputting from our device, which I'll go into further and deeper. Um, another device that's supported is the BioStation A2, which is an Android OS, an indoor reader, but it has, it has multiple keys for time and attendance. Um, you have the outdoor reader as well called BioStation 2, which is a PoE. Then you have the BioLight N2, which is an outdoor and IP rated device. And then you have the BioStation L2, Phase Station 2. Of course, you can have the thermal kit as well, which doesn't send the temperature information over to the packing panel. It's just strictly temp. You could set the settings where it accepts the temperature that you set on the device which allows the Wigan to be sent over to the Paxson panel, which is your card number that you set up in the Paxson panel. That's what's basically being communicated from our device and our system over to the Paxson is the card number. It's just the module of the, the camera kit pretty much is, is embedded where if it doesn't get the right temperature, it doesn't send a Wigan signal. You have a face light, which is pretty much a, a simpler and quicker, less secure version of the face station 2, um, but still secure as well. It just be a quick enrollment. Um, it's only infrared, where the face station has infrared and visual. Then you have the BioEntry Plus 2, which is an indoor reader, and the W2, which is an outdoor reader and also IK rated. And of course, for ease of use, you can pretty much install the Paxton software, have a USB mini, uh, bio mini plugged in, and from that same computer, you can walk around to each department and roll fingerprints. Um, Paxton will not show anything from the thermal. It just means nothing will be sent over to the Paxton system if the thermal doesn't match. But let's say the thermal wasn't in place at all, and you get an access denied um the reader will still recognize you and you show success paxton basically said on their end um invalid token or don't have permission but the problem that we're working on right now is we're, we're working on a firmware that will be able to get feedback from the packing panel so like as i said before look out for the upgrade on our website when that's available where you could definitely program right now access denied and access granted from input keys from our devices. And of course, as you know, with the Paxton panel, they do have an LED for red and green, and that's where the input cables will be plugged in. But later on, we do have that functionality and firmware upgrade, we'll go deeper into it. So looking at these, um, the Phase Station 2 and also the Bio Station 2 has Wi Fi capability. Um, so, if you do want to connect, I don't recommend Wi Fi based on unless you, you're certain that the connection is, is strong and valid, then definitely go, go forward with that option. 
Um, but on our website, you do have different models that you can pretty much search for the specs that will tell you exactly which one are, are, are Wi-Fi um, rating. Um, but any device that doesn't have a menu from here, you can pretty much assume that there is no Wi-Fi capability. <clears throat> on the Paxton side, like I said, what you need is a, obviously a Net2 door controller to use alongside this integration. Of course, you have the Net2 Plus door controller is one of the powerful uh, door controller of Paxton, which uses TCP IP technology to allow direct connection to the IP network. And of course, you can add multiple panels via RS-45. This is a one door door controller. Installing the integration with Paxton Net 2. So here you have the full over, overall diagram. So if you look carefully here, you have a BioLite Net 2, which is the Suprema device. And then from each Suprema device, there's three wires called Wigan cables. So you take one Wigan cable, which would be Wigan Data 0. That would also be plugged into the Data 0 port on the Paxson panel. You get the second Wigan Data 1, which would then connect to the same Data one on the Paxton port, and of course the Wigan ground cable that should go into the ground port on the Paxton panel. So this is the only communication and wiring um, that you would need from our device to Paxton. Everything else, like the exit button, door sensor, relay, that goes from the Paxton to the door interface. So in a sense, if you look at it, if you approach a Suprema reader, it's going to validate who you are and send the Wigan signal to the Paxton panel. If you have a phase station here and you have a thermal camera, like I said, the camera temperature is set from the actual device itself with the special firmware that you have to add beforehand. And once you do that, it would then save the logs to the device itself, but nothing will be sent via temperature to the Paxton panel. Like I said, that could be down the road and integration and communication with Paxton where we could implement those changes. Like I said, the software is still being built and still being, added, sorry, still being added new functionality. Like for instance, feedback from the controller, that's something that we're working on now. So as long as you take the input cables from our device and plug into the Paxton LEDs, therefore you'll be able to get when someone doesn't have access to an actual door, but the system does recognize them, then you get a feedback to access denied, right? Versus it's continuing telling you access granted and you're wondering why is the door not opening, therefore you don't know that you don't have access. And then obviously the system admin will tell you, yeah, you don't have access to that door or from orientation, they'll tell you where you have access to so you at least know if it says green and it's not opening, it doesn't mean the system doesn't work, it just means that you don't have access. Then when you install our Paxton system onto the same network, along with our Suprema integration on the same network, the system will communicate with our device and then Paxton software will connect to their controller via the network. And it's a one-way sync, which you see further on my, my diagram how quick the sync is. So the moment you click add user in the Paxton screen, immediately our system changes immediately. And of course, wherever our integration system is or the Paxton, you can install a USB to make the enrollment a lot easier than having the person go all the way to the device and put their finger down. Any question on this screen um, before I move forward? You can raise your hand and I could pretty much unmute you. Let me know. Yeah, right now you could definitely hook up those, those access granted and access denied. But the, the one thing is whether you get an access granted or denied, Paxton still triggers both lighting. So you pretty much get an access granted light and a denied at the same time. So it's still confusing the user. That's why we're working on a, a firmware functionality that will pretty much suppress one and pretty much so you'd be clear when you are access granted and when you do have an access denied.
All right, so now I have a video that our, one of our panelists was quickly able to put together for us. Um, his name is George. Um, so just watch carefully. And this is basically on our front door. So if you do visit our office in Birmingham, in the UK, if you ever do, we do welcome it. You see a lot of live devices in full effect. This is our front door. So he has the weaving cable going all the way from our front door to one of our test panel, um, Paxton panel inside the office. So you kind of see how he connected it and then pretty much how he can figure the device. Like I said, if you want to email me later on, I can give you the diagram and guide of the, the thermal camera, also the firmware where you can actually test it if you do physically have your own um, PlayStation 2. So I'll play the video. Hopefully you guys can hear it. Actually, there's no sound, sorry. Just in case you missed it, we're playing it again. So you need to add the firmware first in order to get the thermal camera settings within the, the base station. So there you go. You scroll down to thermal camera. You set the thermal threshold. You can either authenticate before or after. So that would have sent the Wigan signal. George is reducing his threshold so he doesn't get off success in the temperature. When you're higher, nothing gets sent to the packing pan at all. Where it's being connected to. So, the, like I said before, the three Wigan wires, all our devices support the Wigan wires. So, your green, white, and black. Keep in mind the black might change depending on some readers. It might be white and black, black and white stripes. This is a phase station that we're seeing here. So, the Wigan port is there, close to the center. Keep in mind, it does have two Wigan for input and output. So this one here is the, the output Wigan port to the Paxton panel. D0, D1, and ground. The additional Wigan wires are usually for like a shield, but you wouldn't need to use the fourth one. Hopefully that's clear. Um, we'll keep going. We do have one, one hour, so I'll save it for more of the practical side. So getting started, so like I said before, once you install the Paxton panel, the first or the Paxton panel, and also the Paxton software, the first thing I would recommend is to go straight to the Net2 operator and set up the OEM client with your password of choice. Obviously, you log into the software with System Engineer. So keep in mind that password usually changed between admins and you know personnel that leave the company. And then you got to switch the password. At least when you do switch the password, switch the personnel, the OEM client doesn't get affected by the sync between these two systems. So you select OEM client. It is case sensitive. So OEM is caps and then the capital C for client. And of course, you got to confirm this password and hit finish. And then for the utility, keep in mind Paxton is looking for uh, a Wigan input. So definitely 26 is, is default with on all our devices. 
Um, of course, I, I believe it is the default for Paxton as well. But if you do want to change the Wigan from 26, here you can come in and do 32-bit if you need to. Um, the desktop reading up, the desktop reading operating on the bottom there. Um, obviously, there's some system that's clocking data and Wigan, so ours operate in Wigan. So you could definitely put it as auto detect, or if you know for a fact it's just going to be our system, then you can select Wigan. But I would prefer and recommend putting it auto detect. If you do have systems that's um, set up as clock and data already and they want to take advantage of the system, um, I did do something different with um, Everton Football Club, where they actually have a thousand plus users all in clock and data. And as you know, our device will support it, but the only problem is it'll be a different number coming through, so it won't be seamless. So what we ended up doing was we offered uh, a customized firmware that would actually read the clock and data. Um, so right now we have that available if you're going to be using a W2 or P2, which what Everton um, is using currently right now. Um, obviously, with our system, you could, you could support that custom firmware um, by adding it into the firmware um, folder and then going upgrade the device. So I'll definitely demonstrate that later on in our practical tests. So here. When you select the special firmware, it has to mimic and be sync with the actual Wigan token data format. So if you did do 32 or a complete different format than 26, here you basically select Wigan Custom. If it's going to be a Wigan type reader, which is our biometric on reader one port and reader two port, please select Wigan Reader and make sure the keypad type is none. And of course, we're using tokens, also be known as card. Um, so therefore, you could pretty much select token only. So therefore, the card information would communicate back and forth and, and authenticate properly. Um, so uh, this is a good question, actually. So I will answer this live. So here you see that there's two reader one and reader two ports. Um, the question is: Is there a reason you wire in wire it in to reader? port two rather than reader one. Keep in mind, you could definitely do, my screen right now, I'm selecting reader one port. So you could definitely have two readers hooked up to reader one and reader two, like I have right now on my Paxson panel, is reader one would be the clock in reader. So if you're gonna biometric or into the front door, you can. And then reader two is normally an exit button that will you use within Paxton. So you could actually have a reader a biometric reader on reader two, on the, the, the reader two port, which therefore, when you're exiting, you could exit via a biometric reader as well. And you can configure them the exact same way. So you could, it all depends on the configuration. So you could do one reader and the exit button, or you could do two readers using reader port one and port two. I hope that helps, um, Elaine. Now, when you do finish installing our system, this is where the, the dashboard looks like. So looking at the home screen of the Suprema integration with PaxNet2 software, um, number one, it's pretty much the device. So here's where you get all the devices that's on our, your network that's been added to our system. Uh, and you can pretty much view the amount of devices connected. Um, there is an option you can right click and disconnect or connect or if you know it's connected but disconnected, you can right click on it and hit connect. Uh, number two, you see there, that's the amount of users that's registered from the Paxton side. So if you add a new user in Paxton, that number will change immediately. So I'll try to demonstrate by having them both side by side so you can see what I do on the Paxton side, what happens. Um, number three, it's pretty much an access to the Suprema website. So if you do need any information, like you need a quick firmware download, you need a device brochure, how to install one of our devices, that's a quick link to our website that pretty much has everything. 
also I'll give you a website that's actually be keen. Um, I did do a detailed um, video recording of how to actually you can see it live and always have playback. I haven't uploaded it yet to the article, but right now the article has a step-by-step -step process from start to finish, from packing installation to our system, and also feedback as well um, is an article. So if you enter in support.supremainc.com and register for that portal, you can actually get announcements, uh, new releases, um, firmware upgrades, uh, anything new, and also articles that walk through step-by-step um, of how to do anything with our system or devices. Also, you can create a ticket. So, for instance, I recommend if you want me to send you a firmware for the PlayStation 2 thermal camera and the, the manuals and the guides, you can send me a, a new ticket um, from that website. And therefore, you, whichever region you belong to, the tech rep will basically respond back to you. Um, number four, if you register a bunch of faces via the face station, it will keep a tally of how many faces in the system, same with fingerprint, and also same with the amount of card that's been registered as well. Moving along, how to add a device, a Supreme device to this integration. It's very simple. Like I said before, you log into our system directly um, for the integration software. So you can't add a device from the Paxson screen, but you can definitely enroll from the Paxson screen, but but from the beginning, you want to do a configuration. You want to go straight to log into our system. Click device tab. Once you click the device tab, you see an add device or a search device. So obviously, the search device will scan your entire network for anything Suprema. The add device is if you know what the IP address of the reader is, um, then you can definitely add enter it manually and hit add. Once you see the device in the list, it will give you the amount of total um, device that's there. Once you do that, then you pretty much go and hit register, and that will add the device in the background, but right on this web space here, or you can move the arrow to move the screen away once you register the device and move forward. The device will basically be added to the system. So once the device has been added now, we can go how would you go back to the Paxson screen now to add a new user. Once you create a new user, so right here, I'm, I'm entering a new user called Sean Griggs. So this is also being named for this window here is called the enrollment helper. So this is why I said when you're doing the installation, make sure you check it off so you'll be able to do this directly off the Paxson screen. So here I am creating a new user called Sean Griggs. His token was automatically entered, by the way. I didn't enter that. Um, Next, I'll select the reader I'm going to be enrolling Sean on. So if it's a bio mini, it's right beside me, I could do that. If it's going to be a biometric reader, like it says right here, W2, then therefore I could go ahead with that option as well. Once I do that, it gives me an option for the quality. So keep in mind, different individuals have different finger, type of fingerprints. And if you're a chef, it's going to be probably harder to, to read sometimes. So you got to lower this quality for this person. So the lowest. I would say 60 on one finger to basically keep trying all fingers on the 60. Worst case scenario, if you can't get fit on um, 60, then, then that's when I recommend to move down to a lower quality, but definitely aim for 60 and above with multiple fingers. So if you can't get the index, which most people sit there and try to do the index, please try your middle, uh, try your, your ring finger, I think from either the left or right hand. Um, so you have six attempts with good fingers, and then worst case scenario, like I said, lower the quality for those same six fingers. And then worst, worst case scenario, then you use your thumb and go to 20. And most likely you can get it good to go. Of course, you have another option as well where you can do face enrollment from the Paxson screen. So if you do have a face station that's been added, make sure you gotta add the reader first before you can use the screen properly. But like I said, you don't have to add a device at all if you're using a bio mini. But for face, you definitely need a reader. So you definitely need to go to the integration software, add that face station, and then come here and enroll someone's face. And then hit add user. The moment you do that, they'll be added in the system and you can go straight to the device and enroll your face and move forward. All right, so another good question um, from Angel and Jeff. So we'll start with, I guess someone answered. Angel, 
So Jeff goes, I've not used Paxson before. What is a token? And it four is a token number reference to the user ID in Biostar 2 or something else in Biostar 2. All right, so to answer that question live for Jeff, um, it's a good question. Token number, you could treat it as a card number, right? So if in this integration system, the token number here is 65542, so that's basically a made up number that would be affiliated with your fingerprint. All right, so from our system now, we're taking that token number in Paxton as a card number or a user ID number. So I could go into a, our system and basically enter 65542 as a card number or ID number, and that would be a sync with my fingerprint. So when I put my finger down, that is a token number that's coming through the Paxton panel to recognize who I am. And then say, yes, this number does exist on the Sean Griggs, let him in. Right, so if you are using our Biostar 2, you can email me at a later date and I can explain how the token number would reference to the Biostar 2. But today is strictly just the integration where that token number being created in Paxton is automatically in our database that would have you working right away with our device. So you won't have to associate any token number at all or create a number at all or any additional functionality. It's strictly from this window. You create a new user, add a token, scan the fingerprint hit add user, straight to the device immediately, and that number will be sent over to the Paxson panel. Hope that answers your question, Jeff. And then here's how it looks pretty much. Um, the user I created on the left-hand side was Paul Pogba. He was then been added immediately to our system um, with the same name, and it shows a one beside the card. That means that's a token number right there. I hope you can see that. Here's his name. And obviously he has his own token that was given to him. And this is just his ID reference within our database and our system. So let's say if you're gonna move from, let's say BioConnect database with all your fingerprints, we kind of basically, you pretty much use this ID and the card number to link with this new user um, to do that migration. Um, so we are working on that migration as well. So if you do have further questions, if you have sites that want to try this out, that have BioConnect and move over, you can definitely contact us and we'll be able to assist you. <clears throat> um, yeah, so the same boat, I create another user called Boris Johnson. He then comes over as the user ID on in our system is 2029. Obviously the user ID in the Paxson database, you might be different. But then obviously the card number is what's synced between the two system here. So the same token number is the same card number that we were, that we validate in our in our card system. Next, I'll break it down on how to add a new user here. So obviously you need the first and last name, the department the person's into in the Paxson panel, the validation. So if Paxson doesn't have that user as valid, and they sync over with the fingerprint, they could press their finger all they want. Paxton does not have them valid at all, so therefore nothing will happen on the door and nothing will open at all. Um, here is where you add fingerprint. Keep in mind this will be updated at a later date to add biometric because obviously face is involved as well, so you wouldn't just put fingerprint there. Um, once you add a fingerprint, the token is automatically generated, so you don't need to do a new token. Keep in mind you can if you want to select a token of your choice, you go ahead and add that token number. But like I said before, you don't need to, it's automatic. So as soon as I click add user, like I said before, 65537 was then created. And now the circle on the fingerprint, what that means is that fingerprint has already been enrolled before. So I would select a different finger, which would be my middle finger. And then once I do that, I select the reader that I'm gonna put that middle finger on to enroll. And then once I do that, I do 80 is the quality I'm looking for, and I hit scan. Then the reader would then prompt you. So some readers don't have a display, it would just blink yellow. Yellow means waiting for input from the end user or whoever is in front of the reader. And then if you have a reader with a, with a screen, it would then say enroll face or enroll your fingerprint.
So here, when you select the finger you're trying to enroll, it will blink and highlight light blue. And then therefore, when I complete the enrollment, it will look like this. So the more reference point that you have, the better. Keep in mind, we don't store real fingerprint to our devices. We do have articles and PDFs signed with our CEO to basically validate that for any of your customers that may have any concern. It's just reference point of your finger on a, on a graph, which is then converted into binaries, ones and O's. So you can't really turn ones and O's into real fingerprints. So you're, you're definitely secure and safe. Of course, it's also encrypted within our devices. So no um, complaint at all. Um, Mark Tate, I'll let one of our panelists answer your question there. Um, are any of the Suprema readers we're discussing today FIP S201 compliant? Uh, Kate, if you could assist there, please. And here, when you put your finger down, like I did here, so someone asked, why do you have to use reader port, port one and port two? So here I have a front door reader on connected to, let's say, to get in on port one. And then I have a BioLite Net 2 on N2 on the exit, which is reader port two. So now when I put my finger down and the system will say, okay, this person entered and then this person exit. So notice that the token number is what comes through in the pack soon. So not a thermal camera um, temperature. Um, like I said, if that is required, that is something that can be discussed with a development um, team in Paxton, if we want to be able to do that as well, where we could basically configure maybe a tab that says the temperature that came through. Um, but like, like I said, that's to be a development that needs to be done if that's, if that's wanted. Now, what I just explained to you now is enrolling directly from the Paxton screen and the ad user screen. So let's say if you don't want to use that screen at all and you want to go deeper into configuring the devices and doing a lot more, you could do the enrollment of a fingerprint and face from our system. So this is how it look. You collect, select the user tab. Once you select the user tab, you get a list of all the users with their ID numbers. You would select that user and then click manage fingerprint. And this screen comes up where you have cards, pin, fingerprint, and face. So I have select my ring finger on my left there. I have an option of two different biometric readers, Biolite Net N2 and the W2. Once you select the reader, you will then enroll your fingerprint and scan. It gets your fingerprint. Like I said, the more reference you have on your fingerprint, the better the performance and avoiding, avoidance of problematic issues. If you want to do a face enrollment, you pretty much have five slots um, to do face. Um, you could fill up all five to make your enrollment, you know, less problematic and, you know, better enrollment issue, I mean, process going forward. Or you could just do one the proper way and you're good to go. Um, like I said, you click your face, select the face station. If it's blank and you don't see a face station, all it means is you have to go to the device tab and add that face station first and then come back into the, men the menu of, I'm sorry, the menu of uh, the face enrollment. So select the face, you hit scan, it does your, your face. Then once you hit scan, you hit apply. Any questions before we get to the practical part of me showing you live? Can everyone see the Paxton panel? Or is there a Paxton screen? Yes, now I can. Perfect. Yep. And, and everyone can see the Suprema integration software as well? Yes. Perfect. So this is how the dashboard looks. Like I said, I have eight users, three devices, and five cards. So to help you, I'll remove these devices so you can kind of see live. So I want to remove a device. I click it, I hit remove. Click it, hit remove, click it, hit remove. I go now into the new screen of adding your user in Paxton. This comes up. So let's take Ruben as my first user. So Ruben does have a question, this is why I'm using his name. So Ruben V. Ruben's gonna be part of the IT department. I only want to give Ruben working hour access. 
I could say I want Ruben to be valid for a certain date, or I could just not put any expiry date. So like I said, from the Paxton side, the token number is what's going to be referenced as the card number, and what is, and this is the number that our readers that will send via the Wigan signal. All right, so that was Ruben's uh, question. So I hope that's clear. So right now, I don't need to add a token number here. All I got to do is click Add Fingerprint. So imagine if this window wasn't open, this would be the process for everybody. So the user ID that it was basically is asking for is when I was installing our system software, it asked me to create a, an, um, a pin and a user ID for the device. So that, so that is device admin, and my pin was one, two, three, four. Before I log in here, I could do sit settings and make sure that I'm on the same LAN network, right? So how you verify that before moving forward, um, let's open command prompt. Remember before I was saying before, I currently right now have my internet on the Wi-Fi for me to be communicating with you guys right now. And then I have actual local area connection with my router and my panel and my three readers. So if I go ARP space dash A, it's going to scan both networks, the Wi-Fi and my um, local area network here. So as you know, most of our Suprema readers, our MAC address starts with 0017FC. So that right there, I could, I could guarantee and guess that these two IP address and this one here is Suprema readers, all right? And then obviously my computer is 0 0.100. Right, so if I was a client on a different network trying to connect back to the server, I would make sure I'd be entering this server address to connect to it. All right, so as you see here, I have the right server port. I hit save, so it's always there. I hit apply. Come back to my Ruben screen, hit add fingerprint. Therefore, I will log in. Keep in mind, if you get any error message at the login screen, it's either going to be case sensitive or you're entering the wrong pin or the actual services is not started. So I'll hit login and see what I get. So this is a success login, by the way, All right? Let's see, you did have an error. First thing I would advise is to open here and check and see if this port, I'm sorry, if this service here is running. So here I have it, I have it running. Troubleshooting aspect, you can right click on it and hit restart in case you run into any issues or close everything down, reopen it and see if you can log back in or really see if caps locks on, maybe enter the wrong pin. So here for Ruben now, Ruben has a token number. So 65544 was automatically there and generated. This is the number that the Wigan output from our device is going to be sent to. All right, this is what's coming through the packing panel. So I hope that's clear and for everyone. So I'm going to select my thumb, or sorry, my index finger here for Ruben. I'm going to select the W2 that's um, in front of me here. I'm going to go with 100. I know I never get 100, so I just want to see you guys see the error message there. A lucky day today. So there you go. I have a success on the, on the reading 100, and I could basically hit apply right away. All right, next, if I want to do another user and do a face enrollment, I can. So let's pick someone else. So let's pick uh, Tony Taylor. Don't need to give him a token number at all. He's going to be in the sales department, working hours. I say all access. Add a fingerprint. Go 
going straight to face. Notice how I went from 4-4 four, four to now 4-5, so it's automatic increment. All right, set the face, face in two, hit scan, So I'm moving my face up and down, up and down right now until I get 100% of the enrollment. Once that's complete, I'm now there. I can now hit add user immediately. And obviously I have multiple fingers enrolled with the same fingerprint. So I advise you guys double checking on that. So I'll go to the event logs. Keep in mind, I haven't opened anything yet other than remove devices from the packaging integration software. So I'll put my finger down now. Hope you guys can see that. So Ruben is basically and exit out the door. I don't have my face station hooked up to the panel. But you can hear the chime that the face worked. So as you see here, I didn't open the integration process at all. I did everything from the Paxson screen and immediately on the, the monitoring tab, you're seeing Ruben's name showed up, you're seeing his token that came through and obviously access permitted and access detail. All right, so hope that answers Ruben's question. Another question from the actual person I used there, Tony. How would you apply the process to temporary guests such as a delivery driver or a visiting engineer do you have to go through the whole process? So for instance, if I'm going to go, um, let's say a new user, if I know that the, the contract is coming on site for a scheduled day, I could pretty much go Mark is visiting I could do working hours for Mark, and I could say expired, same day, because he's coming on that day, and pretty much add a fingerprint. Wouldn't be, unless he's there, then that's when you do a fingerprint, or you give him a PIN and an ID, so therefore when he comes on site, he can enter that right away and get in. But when he gets on site, at least you know he has temporary access for just that day only. Or if you have an intercom in your front door, which is supported by Paxson on their own, and we have readers that do the exact same, you could pretty much go to the door panel here, and you could actually open the door for that person to get in for temporary usage. If you have a, re a reception on person in front door, you could definitely do that. Or you could limit the person to access for that day. So that's the temporary process there. You could definitely do so. And you can contact Paxton. Because remember, Paxton controls whether you get in the door for more um, additional hints and tips. I'm just giving you from what I know so far. Um, another question is in relation to the face slash heat scan. Uh, go ahead if you want to speak, Tony. I think your mic is on mute. I think you've very much uh, answered the question anyway. So thanks, Dwayne. Okay, no problem, no problem. All right, Ruben has a question, guys. So if you add a card on the Suprema reader, the reader will send the token number and not the card number. How do you delete the card number? So like I said before, if you add a, car a card number to our system, it's going to be represented as the token number. So just view token number in Paxton as a card number. It's just the terminology different between the two system. But just hope that hopefully that's clear. So if I had a desktop reader, which I don't have it, unfortunately, didn't want to travel to, with too much um, biometric devices through the border. So if I went here, sorry, right here. If I go to the user tab for Dwayne and go to token, if I was to go new token, and actually have a desktop reader on Ruben, you badge that desktop reader with your actual MyFair card, 
that card will generate that number directly onto this item here. Then you pretty much have that physical card number there. And then once you do that and hit save, this will be synced over. Actually, I'll just do this live. So card number is the user. All access, IT department. So like I said, so imagine guys, I have a desktop reader. It's plugged in right now. I'm badging my card onto this desktop reader. I get a physical reading from that physical card of 8989. And then I go add user. Right? So that user is called card number. Right? I would then open the Paxson system here, integration software. I would then go to my devices. I'll search for devices. Yeah, so if you do delete a card number or delete the user from Paxton, then therefore it will remove from our system. Yes, my fair and EM cards work the same way based on um, the, the reader. If the reader read EM cards, it will definitely do so. If it read um, my fair cards, do so. But don't be confused. Uh, Paxton has its own high tag cards, which is not supported by our reader. So be very mindful of that as well. Angel. All right, so here's our system again. So card number, which if you want to get all the users from Paxson over to our system, you can go get all. And then card number is right there. ID number is 11. It has a token number, which I've given it because of the actual physical card that I've read. If I want to enroll my face onto this user from this side, I can. At the face station, hit scan. So I have my face. I can also continue and go add another finger. Right, I could also add a pin as well. So I can make it 8989, let's say. And let's say that's a card number. Hit apply. So I added everything all at once. Notice card number now has a card number, two biometric, a face, and a pin that says true, all in one. Right, in the monitoring tab, it's also going to show my card. So like I said, we do have more updates coming. So you will see that the name will actually be displayed here. Um, like I said, I have more fingers on the same user, so you're not going to get the right number. So hopefully it's clear. And if you go to the Paxton side, that log is also there as well, 414. Uh, so if an incident happened, you could reference by the time 414. All right, so now from a configuration standpoint, if you go to the settings of our system here, you could do biometric only, card only, card plus pin, or biometric plus pin. Um, this is the global setting. So if I set this here, it's changing every single device that we have in the system because of the global settings. Um, the format type, I could do vegan or normal. 
I can select the different types here. So 32 bit is a preset and 26 bit or a custom 50, or you can go custom and edit and you can make your entire own, your own, um, so 48 bit if you want to, totally up to you. Um, you can change the, the, the pulse rate of the Wigan. So with Paxton, you have to have 2000 or below. Anything higher, it might not send that Wigan signal over to the ACU of Paxton, so that's very key. If you don't want to pretty much read the proper Wigan um, format, you can say bypass on the reader. So as soon as you pretty much badge a card, it just sends whatever number. You take that number and manually put it into the user um, that you want to associate that card with if you have Wigan bypass. Uh, make sure it's Wigan output is set as well. For the server, make sure you have the current server address that's linked to the system. Um, and of course, OEM clients right there. If you do change the password, or if you do use the system in integration or integrator for engineer, you could change the password to match so the sync continues. This is a server of this integration software that all the clients will then connect to to add and enroll users directly to the system if it's a centralized setup. And of course, here you have the actual license slot where you can request an offline or activate an online. Here you can add different admin. So if you have a bunch of users in the system, so like for instance, I created Ruben, I could add Ruben as an administrator to the system and pretty much hit apply. So now Ruben's now an admin. I could tell what device that they will pretty much have access to if I need to. And here's the log audit trail. So if you wanna basically filter out what happened or a certain incident or a certain target for a certain admin, you could basically do so to whatever device, let's say. And you, could, and you could filter out exactly what you're looking for. This is the monitoring tab from our system. And obviously there's a backup of, as well when you have the Paxton to verify. These are all the devices. So let's say I add a bunch of devices, but I don't know where they are. I could right click on a device. Select here I am. And the device will make a noise. And then once I know, okay, that's the device that's at the front door, I can name it front door. All right, I could double click on the device and this device only is where I'm changing it to card plus pin, biometric plus pin. I could put it into DHCP mode, DHCP mode or static. If I'm doing a local area network where that doesn't have a DCP server, I could push the reader to server mode. So if I'm installing the system, but I want it to connect to a centralized site, this is where I'll select the, my Birmingham office server so I can add this reader that's on a London uh, remote site. And there's a, so you can manage multiple sites. And this is all the user lists. So I'll show you live. So if I go add a new user, Kate, you, it adds immediately. So there's you, Kate, over there, no token or slash card, no fingerprint, no face, no pin. To another user, let's say, Tim Lee. So Tim is automatically added while I'm actually doing the enrollment of his finger. Right now, the reader is blinking yellow, asking for my fingerprint. And click add. So now you notice a token number was added to Tim and a fingerprint, and it changed immediately. And if I go to the reader instantly and put my finger down, so card number 13 
Well, it's Tim, it works instantly. All right, so that's pretty much it. I will show you one thing as well. So if you go here, right click on the phase station and do device config, you get all these options, right? On the very bottom, you have view users in device. These are all the users living in this device right now. I could upload them all from the device if I need to. All right, it tells you these are accessible. I can do firmware upgrade. So right now it's showing me the actual thermal upgrade settings or firmware. If you're wondering how do I end up getting or these firmware in the system, it's very simple. You go to your C drive, and then you go to program files, met two, firmware, and then you just drag and drop them all in here basically. Okay. So is there any question before we get to the poll where you guys could um, answer a few questions there? So Ruben had a question. I basically answered that already. So I want to thank everyone for their time today and participation. Uh, I really appreciate it. And like I said, you guys have my email. We will be sending out updates on the webinar and making a, a recap video as well and also frequently asked questions. Um, and if you guys want to take advantage of any of the firmware upgrades that's not being listed on our site, definitely email me or reach out to my colleague or panelists and we can definitely help you. So thank you very much, guys. I appreciate your time. And thank you, Kate and George, for helping out.